Ticket migration is not fun. Nobody wants to do it. It's like that Vegemite snack. You either love it or you hate it. It's like talking to an ex and asking them to move some money around for you. Not good. Not pleasant. It's like having wet socks throughout the whole day. Anyways, enough with the analogies. Today, I'm going to show you three ways of how you can migrate ticket data into Zenus. This is coming from a Zenus expert, decade of experience, 330 projects. So let me show you around to make this easier for you. First option to migrate is help desk migration. It's an app, it's a service that we can use. I'm gonna walk you through. Second step is you migrate everything on your own. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that by yourself. Step number three is you talk to an expert. Step number one, let's go. You go to marketplace and then you go to app and then you look for help desk, help desk migration. Here you go. The guys have been around for a while they have 126 reviews holy crap that's very good quite jealous actually so yeah they've been around for a while and they do a good job apparently i'm going to walk you through on how you can use their service and uh what you first have to do is you have to get an account with them. So let's go here, it's their website. I'm just going to go for a free trial. I'm going to, yeah, sign up with one of my accounts. Let's do it with this one, continue. Alrighty then. So it asks me what the source is, like where am I migrating from? What's my platform? The source right now by default is Zendesk. So they're very experienced with Zendesk and this would be a Zendesk to Zendesk migration. We don't want to do that. Let's check what other platforms they have for you assembler autodesk caillou a csv i like this one the best because usually most migrations are done through csvs i'm going to tell you more about that later database blah blah dixa happy fox gmail groove fresh desk i see here help desk i see here intercom hubspot kayako customer oh my god they're all here live agent so these guys well went all in so they have pretty much all the platforms uh, in history and in future. Asana, Basecamp, ClickUp, GitHub, Monday. Holy crap. Anyways, I'm going to do Zenus to Zendesk in this case, just for the sake of this example. So let's sign into our Zendesk. Let's first put in the domain, pasting it here, sign in. I will obviously ask for me to allow it. So it connects to it and uh, yeah, it, I give it access to all my data. Okay, excellent. So target account. Now this is where I am migrating to. So I can again choose one of the many platforms that they use to migrate to. You'll notice that it's not as many as before. The number has considerably reduced. I'm going to choose Zenesk again. Ah, here we go. Pop up asking me to, yeah, do stuff with them. I have another test account, which is this one. Paste in here, sign into this one too. All right, allow. Okay, so, so far, very easy. Now comes the complex part, which is mapping of data. This is the hard hardest part of a migration. This is what gives people headaches. This is why it's so dirty because you have to mix and match everything. Okay, this one is easy because it's Zenas to Zenas. So, you know, it's groups to groups, tickets to tickets, agents to agents. So pretty straightforward. When you come with different terminology, this is a game changer. Let's just take tickets for now, select tickets, and it's now loading. It's taking all of my tickets. I shouldn't have that many. I mean, I have a few thousand if I think about it, but I have some useful tool tips from here. I don't need it. <laughs> now I have to mix and match everything up. So type type to question to blah so i have to do this with everything 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 okay so this is a very long list save mapping i'm just going to assume it's done well you have to go with this one by one so these are mapped these are mapped everything is mapped now continue loading just a few minutes okay so now it's asking me to map the groups together Okay, I'm just going to again assume that these are well done and you have to do your homework and do this one by one to make sure that you're doing it well. Continue, it asks me again to map agents to agents. So again, it's going to ask me to do the same. I am going to close the tool tips because it gives me a bunch of tips. Save mapping, all good, continue. Another mapping, save it up, continue. Okay, so it's going to generate a preview for my migration. This takes a few minutes. So what this does is it takes the number of records that I have. So how many tickets I'm trying to migrate, agents, groups, etc. And it's going to give me an estimate how much it costs for me to migrate my tickets. Obviously, this varies depending on how many tickets you have and if they have attachments and how many groups you have, etc. I'm actually very curious to see what kind of a quote I get from these guys. Now, 
I think I have maybe 1500 tickets in my test account and then in the other account, it doesn't matter. That's the source. And here we go. Action. So we have, whoa, 160. Whoa, whoa, that's that's a lot. All right, so I think we have more tickets than expected. Original records, migrated records. All right, so demo is complete. Here it is. So. I have how many? 12 groups, agents 10, organizations 27, customers 815, tickets 1647. Oh, pretty close. So I'm getting all data migration price 618 bucks. Hmm, okay. And if I do the standard fee, how much is it? 418. Okay, 9 to 5 via email and chat support, regular SLA, blah, blah, dedicated support on weekends, data re migration, interval, interval migration, delta migration, skip failed record. I don't know what this is. If I choose premium, it's uh, 618. Okay. And I get high priority response, dedicated support on weekends, one data review within. Okay, cool. And then signature. Okay, never mind. Oh, this is even more expensive. Either way, I can get to sort of a thing going there. So 418 bucks. I have 1647 divided by 418. That's 3.9 tickets per buck. Hmm. Okay, so each dollar migrates almost four tickets. So if I have a million tickets, one million, thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, one million times 418 divided by 1,647. I mean, that can't be right. 253,000? Anyway, this is, uh, this is ridiculous. I don't know how much uh, migrating a million tickets is, but it seems like a lot if I just uh, take this amount. I don't know, probably it's like retail. The more you do, the better price you get. But anyways, okay. Uh, uh, for a million tickets with us, probably pay maybe like 15K or something like that. Not not this, not 250. Ooh. Okay, option number two is you migrate your own damn tickets. So how do you do that? Well, allow me to share my screen and show you how that goes. So first thing you do is you collect your data in a readable format, like a CSV. Remember what I said earlier about the CSV? Super important. You have to get all your data in a CSV. It's the easiest way to actually collect all your data because most systems are compatible with the CSV. Then what you have to do, number two, is to map your data. Oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> Meaning that you have to mix and match terminology from your older customer system. You know, if groups were called departments in your old uh, system, you have to map those out. If agents are called uh, CS reps in your older system, you have to map these together. If tickets were called cases, again, you have to map these out. Make sure you get everything mapped out accordingly. Custom fields included. Zenesk API access. So the Zenesk API for ticket migration is uh, is all online. It's actually easy to for you to find. Zenesk API ticket here we go. So you start out from here, ticket import. So you go ahead and you read this up very well and you create some API requests. So you have all your data somewhere and you start using the API to create that data into Zenesk. Now I have an example for you and it's actually right here. This is exactly how you do it. You take this uh, command, okay? And I'll paste it in the description as well so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to open my terminal. Then you take this bad boy, you paste it in your terminal where it says Zenda subdomain, you replace it with your subdomain in Zendesk and then you put your username and then well email and then your password. Make sure that nobody sees that. And and uh, yeah, this is how you create a ticket in Zendesk with the API. In order to not repeat this process for as many tickets as you have, you have to do some custom development. This is the dirtiest part of this project because it usually is not set in stone. So it doesn't matter in what you do it. You can do it in Python. You can do it in PHP. You can do it in Ruby. You can do it in C. You can do it in whatever programming language that you're good at. That's not the issue. That's not the problem. So you can create a script that does this for you. Now, there's another caveat, which is having this data live on a server somewhere. So your code has to fetch the data from the CSV and then convert it to, you know, this uh, beautiful uh, line of code here and then just 
shove that into Zendesk. That's essentially what you have to do. Okay, next is to do the testing. So test until you get it right, until you're happy with what you get. And uh, un when you have a few tickets that work well, standard practice is you do 10 random tickets, migrate those so you don't have the same complexity for all. So you have various complexity for the tickets. Once you're happy with that, you then migrate everything else, like all the bulk that you need. And then you have the validation. Okay, let's uh, actually test to see if this shows in reports, if it works, if I can see it, etc. It's very important to use the ticket import function, not the create ticket API. This is our different functions. The reason why I'm saying to not use the create ticket API, because with this create ticket, tickets fall under the business rules. So each ticket that you create falls under, for example, triggers. A trigger sends a notification to the requester. Thanks for sending in your request. Like, no, uh, it's just like migration. You don't have to know that. So use the ticket import. This bypasses everything to do with business rules. So use this one. Okay. So third option is you work with a specialist. Now, if you don't want to get your hands dirty with everything that I've shown you in step two, you talk to a specialist. Now we have somebody who's worked at Zanesk and did precisely data migrations, and we were lucky enough to get them into the team. This is Gabriel. He's our expert on this. He used to do this for a living uh, at Zanesk, and then uh, he decided to join a very ambitious team. <laughs> if you need any help, hit us up and we can help you with that. We've been doing it for a long time. and. And we don't mind getting our hands dirty. This is what we do. So yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Like and subscribe. We've created a membership area making all this content for free. So I don't know. I could use support if you, if you find any of this useful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.